Okay, I think I have the text set up right. And again, I apologize to everybody who got that email an hour early, but welcome. I'm so glad that you guys are here. Um, if you haven't participated in this event before, um, I'll kind of break down like what you can expect. And if you have been here before, still take some notes and write some things down to implement. The point of these events is yes, to give you some valuable um, information, but more importantly, to get you guys taking action, right? And so what we're going to be talking about today is how you can lose 20 pounds and like wear clothes that you're comfortable in again, right? Have your confidence back, but do it in a way where you don't have to starve or have some crazy diet ruling your life. I'm not all about that action, okay? And so this is going to be great for you if you're just feeling really uncomfortable in your clothes, like nothing fits right, and you're just kind of over it. Um, maybe you're always dodging the camera or like when you're out with your friends, you're like, great, who's going to post a picture of me on social media? Why does Sally always grab me at the worst angle and put it on her Facebook? Like if you're just always worried about the camera, right? And you want to do something, but like all your old tricks to losing weight have stopped working. And so if that's you, no worries. If you're really wanting to get back in your body, but you want to still have a life, this is for you. So I do not live like a food zealot. Um, I don't eat perfectly. Sometimes I miss a workout. Like I'm not all about like this grind diet mentality. I don't think that it's very effective for women. It's not what I practice and it's not what I teach my clients. And so if you're like, can't I still have a life and get back in a body I love? The answer is yes. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm also going to show you why your old tricks to losing weight stop working. I think it's important for us to understand what diets are doing to our body and, and why they seem to slow down over time so that we can avoid doing those things. Um, and I'm going to show you what you can do instead. And I'm going to give you my exact four-step keep it off formula. So this is the formula that I used to take my own weight off. It's what I use with all of my clients. It works like crazy. And so we will get to that. And um, I want to address really fast because I know the biggest thing that I hear from people is that I don't have time, right? You're all super busy. Uh, most chicks are wearing many, many hats these days. So whether you are in the home and you have children that you're raising and a husband that you're trying to have a good relationship with, and maybe you have like aging parents that you're taking care of. Some of you are working outside of the home as well. And it just seems like we have a million things going on. And so we want to take care of our bodies. We want to get back in a body we're comfortable with, but sometimes it doesn't feel like the priority, right? If we're being honest and that's okay, because here's the deal. If you're losing weight in a way where you have to put your life on hold to get the results that you want, it's too strict. It's not going to work long-term, right? So whenever you guys hear me talking about weight loss, I'm not talking about weight loss. Actually, I'm talking about like keeping weight off. That's what's important to me. And so if we have these overly complex, very time-consuming weight loss plans or diets or whatever, they're eventually going to go away. Like we're going to put the weight back on because we're going to get busy again. So I would propose this idea that no matter how busy you are, you can start now because your plan needs to fit your life in its busiest of moments in order to keep the weight off. Like, does that make sense for you guys? And honestly, the longer that we wait, the harder it is to take the weight off because multiple reasons. A, we're just usually putting more weight on, so then there's more to take off. Um, but also we get frustrated and then we try some crazy diets that decrease our metabolism. And so let's just rip the bandaid off and get it done now. Okay. I promise you, no matter how busy you are, now is the time. We always think that like, there's this magical time around the corner where we're going to have an abundance of time like in this next season, right? So it's like, well, when the kids are older, but then the kids get older and then our parents are aging and we have to take care of them. Or it's, well, when the kids go back to school, but then the kids go back to school and they're in a bunch of fall sports. And we're like, okay, so when sports are done, but then it's the holidays, then we're back to summer. And so that magical season of life where you have all this time to yourself, it doesn't exist. I promise you. <laughs> I coach women in all different seasons of life and it doesn't exist, boo. So we're just going to get it done now. Cool. So let me tell you guys who I am really fast in case you're new to these events. My name is Nikki and I'm a nurse or I was a nurse. I don't know how to word that because now I'm a full-time health coach, um, but I'm a mom and I'm a wife. And you know what? I struggled with my weight forever. So when my boys were little and I was working night shift in an emergency room was not the ideal schedule, right? And I was also raised on junk food. 
And like, I kind of knew what to do or so I thought, but like old habits die hard. Right. So there's one thing and knowing what to do, and then there's making yourself do it. And so I really began to like nerd out about what's going on scientifically, what's going on in our brains when we're trying to lose weight. And so I lost my own weight. I started helping friends lose weight. It kind of just turned into this whole business. And now I'm obsessed with it. And here's why I'm obsessed with it. I don't care what any of you weigh. You do. I don't. But here's what I do care about. I care about women feeling their best because when we feel better, we show up better, right? Like I remember how it felt to not have confidence that I used to have and how that would keep me playing small in lots of areas. I didn't want to be as social because I didn't like the way that I looked. And you're not going to put yourself out there in the world as aggressively when we don't feel good, right? And plus, when we're losing weight in a healthy way, we're just getting healthy. And then we have more energy and our brains work better and all of these things. And so I think right now more than ever in the year 2022, the world needs some bold women who are on fire and out there living their own purpose. And to me, the best way that I can, you know, like facilitate that process for women is getting them back in bodies that they like doing life in. And so here's the things that we think about losing weight that are not true. Okay. So we think that gaining weight is an inevitable part of aging. It's not really our age that's putting the weight on. It's some of these things that we do to lose weight that are catching up with us over time. And I'm going to show you guys that, okay? But rest assured, no matter what age you are at, you can lose weight. Um, I have clients in their 60s and 70s who lose weight and get in bikinis. So it's crazy. We think that our metabolism is broken. So if we're doing all the things that we're told by diet culture, by our doctors, by whomever, and it's not working, then the logical thought that we all have is that it's us right? And I promise you, your metabolism isn't broken. So it might be slow and we'll address that, but there's things that you can do to pick it back up. Okay. Or we start to think we need more willpower. So this was always me because my willpower for dieting is crap. If I'm being honest, I was like a three dayer. So you guys can put in the comments how long you can normally stay motivated on a diet. I was like three days. And so this is what we do. We follow really strict diets that are super difficult. Right. And then when we fail at them, we think, oh, it's me. Like everybody else is doing this. Why can't I stick with it? And we think that it's like, we need to just like have more grit. And that's not what it is at all. Or we're doing all the things, right? So we go on a diet and we're exercising and it works until we hit a plateau. And so then if we hit the plateau, we think, oh, I must need to be more aggressive. What is the answer when the scale stops moving? It's usually eat less food, work out more, right? But that is actually sabotage. Uh, Brianne says, if I don't see results fast, I give up. Yeah, me too. In Because like, if we're doing things that are really hard to do and we're not seeing results, like why the heck are we going to keep doing them, right? <laughs> like, I don't think that's a willpower problem. I think that's a methods problem. Um, but when the things that we're doing aren't working, what do we start to think? We're all like, oh, I'm never going to figure this out, right? Especially if we've been trying to lose weight for like decades, or we're worried the scale is going to keep going up because maybe it has been to this point, or we're concerned that we're going to start having health issues, right? These are all the things that we can kind of start to worry about. And we think that if we're going to lose weight, we have to be very deprived. Well, that doesn't sound very fun. I don't want to be deprived. I love food. <laughs> so, and like I just told you guys, I don't have that much willpower either. So that never sounded super fun. Or we think we're going to put out all this work it's going to be miserable. And then when we stop the diet, the weight's going to come right back on. Right. And so that makes us really reluctant to start because we think, well, if it's not going to work anyways, why do we even want to try this? And kind of we're right. Like the things that we've done before, they don't work. We have evidence that they don't work. We've all been doing them for decades and the weight comes back. So we're not wrong in thinking that these things won't work. We're not wrong in being annoyed and want, not wanting to do them again. But the truth is that it's not you. Like you're not broken. It's that diets don't work to keep weight off. We have so much evidence of this, that diets only work 5% of the time, 5%. So I would pose this question to you. If diets only work for 5% of people, how can it possibly mean anything about you? It can't, right? Like your average that if diets don't work for you, but what a fantastic business model they have. Repeat customers, you lose a little bit of weight, you come off the diet, you blame yourself for the fact that you regain the weight. You don't blame the diet, 
It's never the diet's fault. It's our fault somehow. What a fantastic business model. Uh, and then we become repeat customers. So here's what's really going on here. Random diets don't work because we're all different people. Like what my body wants is different than what your body wants. And in fact, what your body wants in different seasons of life even changes. Sorry if you guys can hear the dog barking. Probably Amazon's here because he's here every day, the Amazon delivery guy. Um, <laughs> so if all of our bodies want something different, how could we all possibly follow a generic diet? and get good results. We have to play metabolic detective. And so what I mean when I say that is like figuring out what your metabolism wants, because your body is always speaking to you. We're all just kind of like tuned out from it. But when you tune back in and you start giving your body what it wants, it's like magic. But here's like the scarier truth is that after we lose weight, our body is primed for a regain. I'm going to explain to you why that is in just a second here, but especially if we're using strict methods. So strict methods look really fun because they give you these like, ooh, really fast results, right? This is like all your girlfriends are losing weight on XYZ diet or program. And like, I lost 30 pounds in a month. And we're like, oh, I need to do that. But in reality, their body's primed to regain it because of the methods that they're using. So it ain't actually working. Okay. And then you come off those crazy diets, you regain the weight. And every time that you do that, you make future weight loss more difficult. So we've got to stop dieting. So everybody put this in the chat box for me. I'm done dieting because it's not working, right? So if what we're doing isn't working, we got to try something new. And I know that you're all 100% capable of losing the weight that you want to lose without a diet. Thank you, Brian. It's done dieting. Yes, girl. Yes. I'm so happy for you because this is a game changer, you guys total game changer. So here's the biggest three problems that we have when it comes to losing weight. If you think these through, you'll kind of know which one of these categories you get stuck at. And it might be all of them. For me, it was all of them, but we're confused about what to do. That's number one. Like, where do I even start? What are the steps to take? Number two, even when you know what steps to take, it's how do I make myself do it? Right? How many times are you like, yeah, I mean, I should be doing this, but I'm not. And it could be about your weight or it could be about anything else in life. Like there's things we know we should all be doing that we don't do, right? <laughs> because knowing and doing are two different things. And then the third thing is that most of the approaches that we take to losing weight lead to weight gain down the road. So even if we figure out some steps to take and we can make ourselves do it, if we're using methods that are decreasing our metabolism, we're shooting ourselves in the foot and we're making it impossible. So here's where we get it all wrong with weight loss, following random diets. I think I've beat that dead horse by now, trying random things that appear to be working for others. So if it truly is working for your friend, it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. But I would like propose that from now on, when you think something's working for somebody, you wait for long-term results. So to me, it didn't work for somebody if they didn't keep it off for like three years right? I, I don't care if, what you can do to lose weight in a three to six month time period. If it comes back on, I'm not interested. I did that forever. I regained and lost the same weight over and over. Oh, it's exhausting. I'm done with it. Right? So things that appear to be working are not always working or not having a plan. I was also guilty of this one. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Yeah, I need to lose some weight. So I guess I'm going to start eating better. What does that mean? That's not very specific. Actions don't magically start happening in a very busy person's life. Like they got to be planned out, right? And so we need exact steps to take. It can't just be like, well, I guess we'll start working out on Monday. What workout? What workout are you going to do? When are you going to do it? Who's watching the kids? Like it's got to be a real plan, right? Or it's not going to happen. Or we have a plan and it's only focusing on food and exercise. This is a big one for women, especially once we get past like that 40 year mark, 40s, 50s, 60s, there's a lot more going on with our weight than just how we're eating and moving. That's a big piece of it, right? But it's not the whole thing. And a lot of times we're leaving some really great low hanging fruit on the table when we're only focusing on the food piece. And so tell me really fast what your old tricks were, because I'm going to show you why they stopped working. This is what I mean by that. Like you have, yeah, maybe you're just like frustrated with a number on the scale and you're like, I need to drop a quick 10 pounds. When you were younger, what did you do? Or you're like, well, I got to go to this wedding and I need to defluff or I'm going on vacation. Like, what were the things that you did? So for me, when I was really young, I could just like think about it, I swear. And I probably, if I think back, was 
just like skipping some meals here and there, or I was cutting back on my portions and that worked. And then when I got older, it was doing like low carb. And then eventually it all just stopped working. <laughs> but for some of us, it's diet pills. For some of us, it's doing a bunch of cardio. Like what were the things that used to work for you? And are they still working? So maybe they are. Maybe you're young enough or you haven't done this enough times to your body yet that your tricks are still working, but they're starting to slow down, right? So you're catching things a little bit earlier than some of us did, but here's what happens in our body. So this, we're going to nerd out really fast and just bear with me because I think this is very important for us to understand so that we don't want to just go back to it. If I just tell you diets ruin your body and I don't explain to you why you're still going to go try dieting, right? So I want you to really, really understand this. Brianne says fasting for 12 hours, cutting out pop, changing the way I eat, et cetera, all stopped working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Intermittent fasting used to work wonderful for me until it stopped. And I was so sad. <laughs> and I'll show you why that's happening, actually. So here's the three bad M's of dieting. When I say dieting, I mean anything that's restricting the fuel that you're putting into your body. So this could be calorie counting. Or you might not be counting calories, but you're dropping carbs, which is dropping your calories, or you're doing excessive workouts, which is putting you in a calorie deficit. And I'm not knocking calorie deficits to a certain degree. They're required to lose weight, but it's not as simple as that. And when we do them too aggressively or for too long, et cetera, and we're not giving our body the proper fuel, these bad M's start happening. And so the first one is metabolic adaptation. This is the nerdiest one. This is for my nurses on the call or anybody else with a science background, think back to biology class, the mitochondria of your cell, right? Those little powerhouses in your cell. And so what happens when you start restricting your food intake is those mitochondria get very stingy with the fuel that they're going to burn. So think of it like a car that's really good on gas mileage. We like that in our vehicles, especially with gas prices the way they are right now, but we don't want our metabolism to be that way right? We don't need it to be a furnace that's burning really hot either. We want a flexible, robust metabolism, but we don't want our body being stingy with burning fuel. And that's what metabolic adaptation is. And the degree that you experience that depends on how aggressive you're dieting, how long you're doing it, how many times you've done it over the course of your life. And so the more times you've done this, or the more time that you've spent invoking this metabolic adaptation, the slower your metabolism seems to get. However, we can boost it back up, okay? It's not broke. It's slow, but it's not broke. And then the other way that your metabolism slows down, so the metabolic adaptation, that's kind of like from like the biochem standpoint. Now, what else is happening is that usually when we're losing weight, we're not just losing fat, we're also losing muscle. So we want, when we're dieting, to lose as much fat as possible and maintain as much muscle as we can. But almost all of the methods that women classically use to lose fat create a lot of muscle loss. And this, this is why this matters. So chicks are always like, I don't care if I have muscle, but you do because muscle burns calories. And so if you have more muscle on your body, when you get up and walk to the mailbox, you'll burn more calories than somebody who has less muscle on their body. And we all start losing muscle at like in our early thirties, it starts slowly going away on its own anyways, if you're not protecting it. And then when we're doing strict diets, it's decreasing even quicker. Here's what starts to happen. So I don't know what your happy weight is. I'm just going to make up numbers. So let's say that like you diet and you get down to 150 and you look really good there. And then the years go by and you put on some weight, and whatever. You're like, I got to get back down to 150 again. And you get back to, down to 150 again. Only you're like, I don't look like I used to at the same weight. What is happening? I'm still like soft and fluffy and things are hanging out over my pants. Well, it's because at that same weight, you now have more fat and less muscle. So it's the same weight, but it's a different body composition. It looks different. It leads to like that cool, like skinny fat look, which is what was always happening to me when I would start losing weight. It was so annoying. But here's why it's extra frustrating. The less muscle you have, the quicker you're going to rebound weight gain. The faster the weight is going to come back on. And then every time that we diet, every time that we just live on salads or cabbage soup, or we intermittent fast, or we go super low carb or whatever we do, we think it's working because the weight's coming off. But each time we do it, we're losing more and more and more muscle. So we're further decreasing our metabolism. Does this make sense to you guys? So it's like those two things together are like a recipe for disaster. 
And then the thing that's happening to us mentally is we're just getting burnt out because we're doing things that we don't like doing. I don't know anybody who goes on a strict diet that plans to stay on it forever, right? And so if what you're doing to lose weight isn't a forever option, if it's stressful to you, um, if it's beating you up mentally, because not only are they difficult to follow, but then like what happens is when we can't follow them because they suck, <laughs> then we blame ourselves and it starts to degrade our confidence and like it tears up our belief that we can do it. And so now you're in this position where you have to eat less and less food to get to your goal. Your metabolism, bleh, your metabolism is so slow and now you're mentally fried. So you, you can't keep doing this. So you go off the diet and you put all the weight back on. And now the next time you go to diet, it's harder because your metabolism is in a worse shape and you have less resolve to stay with it. Anyways, your willpower is less because your belief in yourself is less. And over time, it just gets to be like, F it. I don't care anymore. Like I can't keep doing this. Right. And so there is a better way to get it done. I promise you, let's talk about some of the nutritional pieces first, even though, like I said, nutrition's not the whole thing. And when you see the four steps that I'm going to lay out for you, the keep it off formula itself, you're going to see that nutrition is only one of the four steps. But before we get there, we will talk about nutrition because it is the biggest bulk of it. And this is the part that people always care about. So there's three key pieces to nutrition, the way that I see it and the way that I work with my clients. And number one is having a plan that fits you your body, your life, all of that, building your metabolism instead of decreasing it. Ironically, most of the things that build our metabolism also boost our hormones and balance those out. And so that's a win. And then having a long-term strategy in place so that we're not doing this over and over. So let's dive into all of these a little bit deeper. So customizing your plan, what do I mean by that? Number one, it's got to fit your schedule. So if you work outside the home 60 hours a week, can you be in the kitchen for six hours a week me making a bunch of meals from Pinterest? No, you, you literally can't do that. Um, if you have little kids in the house and you don't have anybody to watch them, I guess you're not really going to go to the gym for an hour and a half every day, right? So there's so many different things that you can do in your life to lose weight that pick the things that actually are going to work for your schedule and then also pick things that you like. So there's not magical weight loss food. Like if you don't like avocado, don't eat avocado. Like <laughs> when I'm working with my clients, one of the first things that we do is we sit down and I'm like, just tell me what you normally eat. No judgment. This is a girl who was eating pizza rolls for breakfast and pop tarts for dinner. Not even joking. You guys like my eating had it, my eating habits were that of a toddler. Okay. But I like to see what people enjoy eating because we can usually make super simple tweaks to what you already enjoy. And then it's not such like a mind shock to you because you're still getting foods you're familiar with. It's easier for you to continue cooking them. You get less resistance from your family. Like none of my clients are cooking separate meals for their husband and their kids. That's nonsense. Nobody's got time for that. Right. So we'll pick things that you actually like. And then what does your body want? Because what your body wants and what my body wants are different. And we got to figure that out. Your metabolism is always speaking to you and telling you what she wants. And when you start cooperating with your body, instead of bullying your body, it's like magic. Okay. And so then we want to be fueling our body. This is part of like giving it what it wants, right? We think weight loss is about taking things away. In my experience in coaching hundreds of women, it's typically about adding things back. It's just different things, right? It might even be the same things you're eating, but we change the ratios or something like that. When things are missing, your metabolism can't keep going. Your hormones can't keep going. And so things get out of whack, right? But when you give it what it wants, you have more energy. You are more patient. You sleep better. All of those things actually help you change your lifestyle, by the way. Because if we're hungry and tired all the time and crabby, we go, F it. I don't care. Give me the ice cream. Right. But when you're fueled and fed and you're not hungry all the time, like you are when you diet, like you have more energy to do this. You're just like, yeah, okay, this is cool. I can do it. Right. It feels like totally different. And then number three is you got to have a long-term plan. So the plan can't be, I'm going to diet my way down to the weight that I want to be. And then go back to doing what I always did. Go back to the sad diet, the standard American diet. Um, because then you're, going to put the weight back on, right? That's how we got where we are in the first place. And so here's how you know if your plan is too strict to be a long-term plan. 
if you are currently trying to lose weight and you're counting down the days until it's done, if you're like, I'm just going to do this thing for three months and I'm going to grit through it. It's too strict. It's not going to work long-term, right? So we got to have like a long-term plan in place. And so once you do that, losing weight's actually fun. I know that that sounds crazy, but I swear to you, it can actually be really fun to start to figure all of this stuff out and start to feel really good again and start liking how your body feels and still being able to have a life that you like. And it gives you back the confidence and the control. So this is what I like about this approach. Once you start seeing results from doing things in a less strict way, you start to go, oh, I can really do this. This is possible for me, right? And so that builds your belief. It keeps you going. That's where the motivation actually comes from, by the way. It doesn't come first. It comes after you've started to get some wins under your belt. And this keeps you off of that yo-yo diet cycle. And so let's jump into these four steps. So this is where I would really like get out a pen and paper. If you're following this four-step formula, you're going to keep weight off. I promise you. You're not going to feel like you're starving all the time. You're not going to be doing things that you hate. This is not about deprivation. Okay. This is about like, how do we really like just incorporate this into our life? And so the first one is going to sound redundant with the first piece of nutrition. And that's because it is. Um, But step number one is coming up with your own blueprint. So what does science tell us that we need to do to lose weight? Not what does Facebook tell us? Not what does our girlfriend who is the diet queen who she's always on a diet and she's always losing weight, but that means that she's always putting it back on too, right? So we start to look at these people who've been dieting forever and they're always losing weight as being some sort of experts. Question where you're getting information from, okay? Go to people who have, go to science, first of all, but then go to people who like have results that have kept them for years. They might know something, but just because it worked for them doesn't mean it'll work for you either, right? So what does science say about losing weight? And then how do you marry that with your life? How's it going to work for you? It doesn't need to be perfect. You don't got to do every single thing in the scientific literature that's true about weight loss. You just have to do enough of them to get results and do it in a way that it fits your life. That's your blueprint. It's marrying those two things, okay? So it's not cookie cutter. So a diet could never possibly work, like a food list. Like here, eat these foods. These are the naughty ones and these are the nice ones because everybody's body is so different. So steps two, three, and four, you're never getting in a diet and you're not going to want to do them either (laughs) because they're not simple and clean cut and black and white. Like our brain likes things, but they're the magic. This, this is the magic right here. Steps two, three, and four. I promise you. Um, Number two, discovering and overcoming your obstacles. We all have them. We all have obstacles in our life. Nobody's life is like super, super simple and easy. And you have to know what things are about to present an issue for you and then come up with a solution. This is all just like problem solving, right? You just got to become a really good problem solver. And so what things are going on in your real life that may present a struggle for you in changing the way that you eat and exercise and all of these things. So it might be a crazy schedule. It could be aging parents that you have to take care of. Like there's lots of things that it might be. Maybe you're a super fussy eater. (laughs) That's a real obstacle. We can work with that though. I promise. (laughs) Um, But there's lots of things, right? So those are the real life obstacles, but then we all have mindset ones too. And so what might this look like? Let me give you guys some examples. Um, Maybe you really don't believe that you can do it. Right. And so what this looks like is we start to implement some change. And the first time we don't do something perfect, we use it as evidence to go, yep, I knew I couldn't do it. And we quit. If our belief is very low, we will stop all the time. We won't be able to be consistent. There's all kinds of ways that we self-sabotage ourselves. So that's a super deep mindset topic. Um, there's just false beliefs that we have about what it even takes to lose weight, right? We think that we need to be perfect. We think all of these things. And so there's tons of mindset stuff that's going to come up. I'm telling you guys right now, 80% of losing weight happens in our brains. It just does. And so we've got to address these things. And then we can move on to step three, which is turning this into just like 
how do you do life? So people are like, are you going to make it a lifestyle? Well, you do, but how do you do that? Like, I hated it when people said that to me. It's a lifestyle. I was like, yeah, well, how do I get to that lifestyle? I think your lifestyle sucks. I don't want to live that way. I want to eat Doritos, right? So how do we get to this point where like we're eating in a way that our body is actually happy? Well, it's with habit change, right? We have to make habits. We have to change our behavior. Well, how do you do that? Well, there's actual like proven methods to doing this, but it's not bullying yourself into submission. It's not talking crap to yourself and being like, you piece of trash. Why'd you eat that? Don't you want to lose weight? Like, do we have these internal dialogues or what? And we think we're just going to like beat ourselves into submission. It doesn't work that way. And we can't wait for motivation either. So here's the myth with motivation. We think motivation is what gets us started. Sometimes it is. But even when it does, it's very short term. So for me, I was a three dayer. <laughs> I'm on the diet for three days, right? And then we lose motivation. Well, guess how long it takes to make a habit? It ain't 21 days. That's just some really good marketing from some diet companies. But habits can take years. Like some of them take a year, at least if they're big ones. You can change like what time of day you're going to brush your teeth. You can do that in 21 days. You're not going to change everything about the way that you do life in 21 days. So if we're only motivated for a few days or a few months, if you're a rock star, some of you probably could go for a few months, but then we're not going to have like a new food habit for like a year or longer. Well, how do we bridge that gap? Well, it's with like these proven ways to change your behavior and to develop habits. And that's what we have to start working on. We can't just bully ourselves into submission. So do I give my clients like accountability and things like that? Yes. But I also teach them habit development because I don't want people dependent on me forever for their results. And when you're depending on external accountability, that's what's happening. So that's why we go to like these boot camp style things where it's like we go for three months and they give us these aggressive workouts and they give us this rabbit food to eat and we lose a bunch of weight. And part of it is because we're it's new and it's exciting and we paid for it. So we're going to do it. That's awesome, actually. Um, but then what happens is we didn't learn any habits. And so when we quit going, we're right back where we started. So step number three is very, very crucial that you develop these little sticking points, I call them, where you reach this place where it's more difficult for you to go back to behaving the way you used to because you like what you're doing. So if you're eating in ways you don't like, you're never going to get here. So it all starts with step one, eating things that you like to get where you want to be, overcome those barriers, right? But now we develop actual habits. And then we arrive at this mythical place. It's not really mythical. It just feels that way where we're at the lifestyle. This is, this is maintenance. This is, we have arrived. We are at our goal weight. It no longer feels like effort. I promise you that you can really truly get here. And this is what this looks like. Okay. So I almost hate to use the word balance because I think we misunderstand what it really means. Balance doesn't mean that we're perfect, but balance can be a slippery slope. Like moderation can be a slippery slope. Well, what is moderation to you? It might be very different than it is to me. Well, what this balance and moderation zone looks like is like how loosey goosey can you be, but keep your results. If you're not keeping your results, well, then we didn't hit, we didn't hit it on the head. Right. But we can't be perfect all the time. If we have to be 100% aggressively on a diet or we fall totally off, we can never get to maintenance phase because our mindset isn't prepared for it. So this is what it looks like. It's like, um, let me think of an example. Okay. So you're, you're dieting really good. Things are going great. You feel like it's not that hard, maybe even, but you haven't like started developing habits and things. And then you go on vacation and you come home and you're off the diet now. And like, somehow you just like stay off of it for three years and gain all your weight back. And you're like, wait a minute, I just went on vacation for a week. Why did I just binge for three years? <laughs> or like you are doing really good. And then you have a night out with the girlfriends or you go to a wedding or whatever it is. And because you came off of your plan for that one day or that one week, it totally derails you and you can't get back on. It's that all or nothing thinking I've got to be 100% on or 100% off. And as long as our brain is stuck in that mode, we can never find balance and maintenance because maintenance is backed off a little bit from being as strict as losing weight, right? Even if our methods aren't that strict, you get to loosen the reins even a little bit more once you're in maintenance mode. But a lot of chicks can't do that. 
it's like, no, I have to be aggressive and I have to be counting and tracking my macros and I have to be in the gym six days a week or I, or I don't do any of it. Right. And I'm an all or nothing thinker like that, by the way, like my brain naturally is like, go big or go home. If I'm going to put my time and my mental resources into this, then I'm going to be as aggressive as I can and get the best results I can. And that just doesn't work when it comes to our health at all. So we just got to get to this balanced out place. And it's super fun when you get there, by the way. So for those of you who are more visual, I wanted to like lay this out as a picture. So you can see where you can't really skip any of these steps, right? So if you don't have a personalized plan, how are you ever going to get to step three where you're making habits? If your plan sucks and you hate what you're eating, you're not going to be able to form very good habits around it because it's too hard. Habits have to come from doing things that are reasonable. Like the juice has got to be worth the squeeze. If I have to starve just to lose five pounds, that five pounds isn't worth it to me, right? The juice isn't worth the squeeze. So what things can we do in step one to get the scale moving in a way that you like, but that doesn't feel like torture so that when we get to step three, we can actually make habits out of it, right? So step one is kind of always in the works because we're listening to your body. Like when I'm coaching clients, I'm always asking them for feedback. What's your body saying? Maybe your body wants more of this, less of that. What's it saying? What's it telling us? And we're making adjustments as we go so that the plan gets better and better and better because you're learning your body. And then we're moving into step two where we're figuring out what the mindset hurdles are. How do we keep this going? How do we not beat ourselves up? How do we have fun with this? How do we get our confidence back and our belief in ourselves and all of these things? Okay, now let's start making habits. So then by the time you get to step four, it's just kind of already done basically from steps one, two, and three. And so I'm gonna pose this question to you ladies. How do you wanna feel in 90 days? I like 90 days because it doesn't feel, it's not like tomorrow, right? It's like, you can actually get something accomplished in 90 days, but it's not so far away that our brains are like, yeah, well, whatever. That's a whole year. I'll worry about that later. 90 days to me anyways, it feels like, yeah, I can implement some change here. So in 90 days is going to pass whether we do anything to take back our health or not, right? So how do you want to feel? Like if you had a magic wand and you could feel any way you want in 90 days, you could have some great results. Now, you know, if you have a hundred pounds to lose, are you going to lose it in 90 days? No, but you can have all of the groundwork laid and be on a really solid plan. And you could be down 20 pounds, maybe even 30 pounds. I don't know. It depends on your body and how quickly it'll release that fat on a nice solid plan. Um, but you can feel a lot different. Your clothes can fit a lot different in 90 days. Trust me. Um, your energy, your mood, this and that and the other. So like, how do you want to feel? And I'm going to share some stories with you guys. Gail, are you on? Did I see your name? I'm going to share these with you guys because here's how my brain works. I need to see that like people who are similar to me have achieved the thing that I want to achieve because that gives me, oh, Gail is on. Hey girl. That gives me frame of reference for what's possible. Like if, if I can see that other women before me have walked the walk, then I'm like, oh, okay. I, I can probably do this, right? And so that's why I want to share these stories with you guys. So Gail, who's on the call right now, girl had a nightmare of a schedule. Gail, how many hours a week were you working when we started working together? So she's a nurse and we started working together during COVID. And she was working an insane amount of hours at her own hospital. And then she was picking up at another hospital. Honestly, she had the busiest schedule that we've ever had to work around. <laughs> but I like that. It's a puzzle, right? We'll figure out how to get it done. And she did it. Like she lost, I think 28 pounds in our initial 12 weeks working together. She's lost more now. Her body composition changes are insane. Like she looks amazing. She feels amazing. And she was able to do it with a crazy schedule. So I wanted to highlight that story to tell you if you have a really crazy schedule, it's totally fine. You can totally do this. And then Christine who had like some mobility issues, like she had a really bad back. So she felt like what she told me was that she wasn't really sure what to eat. And she wasn't really sure how to move, but she was frustrated anyways, because she couldn't work out. And so we started with the food and the mindset stuff. And she lost also around 28 pounds ish. I think, um, at the time of these photos, she has since lost more. The pictures look like so much more. I can't believe she was only down like 20 something pounds in that picture, but nonetheless, that's what she lost. And 
her bad back went away. Like now she does yoga and she goes to adult, adult dance classes and all of these things from just the mindset and the nutrition piece. So even if you're to the point where like you have some aches and pains and your body's kind of like not cooperating with you, you can get it back. Okay. And then Laura, she was my dieting cardio bunny. Laura was doing all of the right things. This chick's got way more willpower than I ever had. When I looked at how she was eating and working out, I was like, Oh, bless your heart. I could never be as strict as you are. But even though she was doing all of those things and she was super strict, she wasn't losing any weight. She was like going back up and down five pounds, back up and down five pounds. And so with her, it was a matter of like giving her back more food. And she was like, we just had to give her the right food, right? What her body was kind of telling us it wanted. And she was like, if I eat that, my scale is going to explode. No way. And I'm like, do it. Just come on. I had to like coax her into it. And so like three weeks go by her scale started moving right away. Three weeks go by though. And she's messaging me like, I feel amazing. I can't believe how much weight I'm already losing. But like, I just realized that I really like my food now. She's like, I enjoyed my lunch today. Like she hadn't enjoyed what she was eating for God knows how long because she was eating what she thought she was supposed to. So this is the thing. You don't have to be doing these crazy strict things. You guys, you can like your food. And then Lynn was already through menopause had tried everything. She was basically like Laura or she was eating like a rabbit, doing a lot of cardio, this and that and the other really wasn't getting anywhere. We worked together a very long time ago, back when my program was only eight weeks long. And at that time, I think she had lost like 25 pounds and then on her own without me, because once you know how to do this, you don't need like continued support typically. So she went on to lose like 25 more pounds on her own. She wore a bikini last year on vacation in her sixties. She was like, I haven't worn a bikini in three decades. And that just happened. And I'm like, boom, crying on my couch when she texted me like, oh my God, this baby. So all of that to say, it doesn't matter how busy you are. It doesn't matter if your body's cooperating with you or not. It doesn't matter if you've already tried everything, all the strict things and they're not working. It doesn't matter where you are in menopause or what your age is. This is entirely possible for you. And this is the biggest takeaway that I want you guys to get is belief that you can do it. Okay. So your current situation isn't even your fault. It's diet cultures. It makes me so angry. It makes me so angry because I wasted so much of my own time and resources. And I watch beautiful, brilliant women doing the same thing. But uh, just because it's not our fault that we're in the situation we're in, it doesn't mean we can't change it. You absolutely can. You can. It just takes breaking free of this diet mentality, okay? So your body is not your enemy. Willpower is not your problem. Your metabolism isn't broken. It might be slow, but it is not broken. It's just that our approaches that we were taught, by the way, there's no new diet. <laughs> so low-carb diets came out in like the early 1900s. Doctors started using them with their patients for weight loss. And then we started calling it Adkins and then it was keto and then paleo came out. And then we called that whole 30 and now it's AIP, which is stricter. There's variances. Okay. Um, but Optivia is the popular one right now, which is a spinoff of medical weight loss where it's like here, eat every couple of hours. And here's all these prepackaged foods that are terrible for you and have at it. It's very strict. It's not new. Like these things have all been out. And if they didn't work for us for the last hundred years, why would they be any different? Right. And so if this all sounds great and you're like, cool, I want to pull all this together and I have no idea how, then let's set up time to chat. I have what I call these strategy sessions. Okay. So these are free. They usually take 15 to 30 minutes. And here's what we're going to do if you decide that you want to do one of these calls, which by the way, let me put that. Let me put a link here in the comments for you guys in case you want to do one of these. Okay. So comment or the link is in the comments, but here's what we do on these calls. I want to dig in and find out really what's going on because a lot of times what we think is keeping weight on our body isn't the actual problem. So before I know if I can even help you, we got to get to the root of like what's going on. So I'm going to ask you a lot of questions about like things that you're doing, whatever. It's very low key. We're just having a conversation. Um, and I want to find out more about your goals. And make sure that like everything is kind of matchy matchy and that our personalities jive and all of those things. And if it looks like I can help you, then I'll explain to you how that Keep It Off Academy works. And that's my 12 week coaching program where I show women how to lose 20 or more pounds without having to do the crazy diets and all the weird things, right? 
why is my slide working? Okay, there we go. So this is for you if you're like, I know I need to do this, but I'm not really sure how to set my plan up, or I'm not really sure what my, my mindset barriers are, or any piece of the puzzle seems like a little bit confusing to you, then I would definitely grab one of these calls. Or if you're in category number two here, where you're like, yeah, I know exactly what to do, but I can't make myself do it. Then you for sure want to talk about coaching. That was always me. Like, how do I do the things I say I want to do? <laughs> So if you find yourself like in either one of those categories and you like want to be really committed to losing weight, but you just aren't sure how to even go about it, grab one of those calls. This is not a diet or a meal plan. I don't give you a prescribed meal plan. I don't go, here's a naughty and nice food list. Okay. But essentially what I'm going to do is kind of give you everything I know on a silver platter and shortcut you having to do research for the next 10 years. <laughs> You're all super smart chicks. I know that you guys could go figure this out, but I've been nerding out about it for eight years and I have the like firsthand experience in helping hundreds of women. And I'm going to just give you all of that and guide you and give you a method to follow so that you can kind of shortcut having to do all of that background work yourself. And honestly, the coaching piece is the most valuable. So the knowledge is great. Having a method to follow, great. But being coached, by somebody who's walked the walk that you're trying to walk is invaluable. I hire coaches for everything. Like if I can get a coach to help me with a problem, I'm game. Just because <laughs> it's the only thing I've seen that actually shortcuts it. You still got to do the work, but it's going to give you structure. It's going to give you accountability until um, those habits are formed, right? You have somebody in your corner to go to. So you have a hang up. Like, let's say you hit a plateau instead of being like, well, I'm just going to eat less. No, don't do that. That's not ever the answer. I mean, once in a while it is, but not usually. No, come to me and we're going to go through this little like checklist that's in my brain of like, okay, here's the things that we need to do. Let's get the scale moving. And it gives you confidence because when, you, when you've been struggling with something for a while, it can start to feel like, okay, this isn't possible for me, or I don't know what I'm doing, or maybe it works for other people, but my body's broken. Like we have all these thoughts, right? If you knew that you had a plan that works and it's systematic, let's do these things. And other women who are just like you have been able to have success with it. Then you can borrow the belief in that plan, right? I know that you can do it. You can borrow belief from me. I know it's entirely possible. It just takes different methods. And so you'll build your belief in yourself once you start to see results. But it's really hard to have belief in yourself when you don't have any evidence to like say that you should kind of thing. You know what I mean? And so having a structure to follow, having a plan to follow and having somebody in your corner who's been there can be invaluable just from the belief perspective. And you need belief to keep going. You really, really do. Um, and I'm going to help you play metabolic detective. This is like my favorite thing, like is figuring out what your body wants because it's different for everybody, right? And so I can't, do the work for you. Like if you decide to grab one of these calls, maybe we're going to work together. Maybe we're not. But if you do decide to join the Keep It Off Academy, I can't like just make you magically lose weight. You have to do the work, but I'm just giving you an actual plan where it's like, here, let's take out all the things you don't need to focus on. Because so many times we're like, so focused on like getting enough water or like I have to do this specific workout and I don't really have time for it. Or we just, we have these ideas of what we think we have to do. And when they don't work for us or we don't have time for them or whatever, mm -mm, let's just get rid of all that. Like we're going to go for the low hanging fruit and come up with a plan that works for you. So you don't have to guess, right? It takes the guess workout. That's the magic of it. And so I'm just going to leave you guys with this. There's nothing special about my body. I wasn't able to lose weight because I, I have any magical powers or um, a, a rock solid mindset. That's that certainly wasn't it. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. And the, you know, there's nothing special about the women that I coach. I mean, they're special and near and dear to my heart, but they don't have like some magical ability to lose weight. Okay, it's just that they follow the process. I followed the process. They were following the process and getting the results, and it's different than what diet culture is teaching. That's the magic. You have to break away from that diet culture mentality. And it's a really hard thing to do on your own because it's ingrained in us. Like some of us have been seeing and hearing some of these things since we were children. 
Like if your parents were dieters, if your mom was a dieter, you heard all of that, especially if you were growing up in the eighties, like I was, everything was like low fat, do cardio, blah, 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 all these things, right? We still once in a while think random things like eggs are going to give you heart disease. And it's like, nope, they're not. But we think these things still, and it can be hard to shift our mindset, but you can absolutely do this. Okay. You deserve it. A lot of times women don't want to put themselves first because we feel like it's selfish or we don't deserve it or any of these things. Those are lies. Those are lies. You do deserve to feel good. Every single human deserves to feel good. And you show up better for those around you when you take a little bit of time to do some self-care. So I really hope that you take some action today. Like what can you do today to start getting back in a body you love? I really hope that I see your name popping up on my calendar and we can chat about this. Uh, Whether we end up working together or not, I love getting to actually conversate with you guys instead of me just yapping at you on these events. And so I look forward to chatting with you and follow along in the Simplified Fat Loss group. If you guys aren't in there, um, shoot me a message on Facebook and I'll send you uh, a link where you can join us there. It's a free group. It's for any women who are trying to lose weight We do a lot of like different challenges and things like that in there. So it's a good place to stay in touch. Um, But thank you all so, so much for being on here. I hope that you got some value from this. I hope that you got like at least one little aha moment that's going to change the way that you do weight loss and everybody go enjoy the rest of this gorgeous day.